Hey, went to an auction last night chasing something really great. Didn't get it, but ended up with some cool stuff otherwise, including something super controversial that I'm not gonna move to sell, but I will show later in the video. I also got a few cool things in the mail this week. Let's dive right in. Auction started with the junkier box slots. Mixed into the box slots was this bad boy. I bought the box slot that included this box. Got a bunch of nails. Some sandpaper that I've also kept to use for later. Some of the stuff that I threw away. But check this out. Early, early box, square nails. And we show the bottom. It's signed. Can't really figure it out there. It just looks like a person's initials. But it is square nailed. Has this great surface, as you can see. Just a great, great, great surface to it. Nice early box, square nails. Looks like white pine. Not sure if it was made in Ohio or up north or up east somewhere but white pine that was a really good deal got that for a really good deal this was also mixed into the box slots had to pay for this a little bit croquet sets have gotten really desirable for decoration in recent years and i'm talking about like the 1940s ones but this is actually super early set you see sometimes folk art dealers will have these these turned sticks with great early paint they'll have these like mounted into like a display thing Oh man, with a base, this would look really cool. Great, great, great surface on these guys. Also included four mallets, also with good paint, and the five balls. Did have to pay, had to pay a little bit of money for these. Not as cheap in the box lots as you would like, but super excited to get these. We went there specifically for some early paper, a diary, but this stuff, probably the same consigner, but uh, I had to pay about 80 bucks for all this. So I had to pay a little bit of money for it. Really cool album from traveling. I just love this photograph. I love it. There's, I don't know, soldiers in uniform. I'm, I haven't figured it out exactly. It looks like Europe somewhere. I don't know if this was post-World War II or right at World War II. Could have been occupational germany after the war maybe cool album actually got that really cheap but they made me pay for this box lot i think i was like 50 bucks on this box lot they made me pay for it but this this photo is cool as anything it got broke in the at the auction i believe uh, the piece is in there but custer county corn exhibit at the oklahoma Sh street fair Dated 1899. Those are corn socks. Custer County. Really cool thing. Memorial photo. Big one. A lot of photographs. This might be the family of the person who we were... This thing we were chasing. A lot of postcards in here. I think a lot of $10 postcards, you know, when you add them all up. From the Ohio flood. Real photo cards. Some of these might be better. Damage from the flood. Uh, excited by this one. I have to figure this out. Pennsylvania Parade, Real Photo Parade. I guess World War One, maybe when they first got back. Guantanamo Bay, soldiers at sailors at Guantanamo Bay. More of the Ohio flooding. Wilkinsbury, PA, another one. Yeah, just a bunch of photographs. So even at five, ten dollars each, the lot will eventually pay for itself. I don't really like doing all that work selling five dollar postcards. A lot of other photos, a lot of stuff in here to go through, some fun stuff. Bunch of more photos of the sailors, negatives. Um, war, war ration book. Photos, photos, photos. This thing's in a bit of pieces, but it's a scrapbook. Missing one thing here, but a really interesting scrapbook from... Um, I believe this area of Ohio, Centerville or area of Ohio, a lot of stuff, tickets, ticket stubs, really cool little scrapbook actually, Labor Day 1920, the people went there, their doctors stayed in a hotel in Cincinnati, Cedar Point ticket from 1919. So, High School Athletic Association, 
east side high. Also has the people on the back. Kind of a cool little scrapbook. 1921. So they made me pay for that box a lot. That's okay. I think there's some good stuff in there. I also had to pay like 25 for this box a lot. A bunch of, I guess, World War II era money. Not that one. It's Costa Rica. Uh, I don't know. Some Japanese yen. But more real photo postcards and photographs. Same family, so all the similar stuff. Castle Farm, Cincinnati, Ohio. Looks like a prom, I guess. Did they have prom back then? I don't know. More photo, more, more postcards and photos. I'll be selling $5 and $10 postcards on eBay until the cows come home. Do they still say that? I don't know. New Mexico. All right. So that's all I bought at the auction. We went there chasing a Civil War diary. I'll show you these photos here. Civil War diary from the preview. This auction was not online. You had to go there in person, leave call and leave a bid maybe, but they were, there were no bidding online. So not on live auctioneers. And the live auctioneer results for these diaries are anywhere from, I don't know, Three hundred dollars in the low end to a bunch over a thousand. The bulk of the diaries, though, land in the seven fifty to nine hundred dollar range, nine fifty thousand dollar range. This diary went for fifteen hundred dollars. No buyer's premium, but fifteen hundred dollars flat. So, but it's cool. We found the guy's name. I mean, he was written on it. He talked, had some interesting stuff inside, as best as we could read it. But same family had this box a lot. Emily's dad bought this box a lot in the back. Some interesting things, weird stuff. It's a weird mix. I don't know how they divided it up. Um, he was in the Civil War. The original guy was in Civil War, but it looks like his grandkids or great grandkids fought in World War II and Vietnam, judging by all the paper at this auction. Cool thing. Rob got this. Rob was smart. He dug through the box lot and he found it. Here is a letter the guy wrote to the War Department in 1910 asking about where his brother was buried. His brother died in the Civil War. They, however, did not have the best of, best help for finding it. But also, it's the official affidavit of this guy. Really cool. This was written, I think, closer to the Civil War, if not during the Civil War. And the guy was getting out of the civil war so we ended up with some cool two cool uh civil war documents or one uh era document and one later from civil war soldier but we did not get the diary but like i said we found these cool letters we'll try to see if the auction house won't let the buyer know that we got these letters that should probably go with the diary they should stay with the diary they were with the diary but we're excited to find them buried in this stuff though KKK application. Found a few online for sale. We're not going to sell this. We're going to try to donate this to a museum, Underground Railroad Museum out here. Maybe they might like to show this, but we don't want to sell it. We don't want to profit off of this, and we don't want anyone to buy it who would think that it's uh, something worth, you know, having because it's cool. It's worth having because of the history, because we don't want to forget where we were in this country and hopefully where we're going. But they did. 1920 fill in the year but 1920 application for the kkk we will be donating this to a museum besides the auction it was also mail day i got a few things in the mail finally broke down and bought this book i actually didn't want to buy it off of amazon so i paid like a dollar more to buy it off of ebay i figured i'd rather support a seller on ebay than support the amazon algorithm i don't know i should have tried to find it on a private website but uh library copy little doll on the cover but oh man such cool stuff if you're not familiar with this outsider art folk art book you should become familiar with it i've actually sold sold frank some stuff before um yes has a gallery in new york city you should check it out if you're in the area i've never been but i would love to go that being said i also bought from a vendor i met in nashville i bought these two things oddly enough completely unrelated obviously um, Emily and her dad really like owls. I'm trying to sell this to her dad. I'll give it to Emily. One or the other. We'll see. I also got this cool little clown juggling ball, I believe. It's like vinyl, like 1920s, hand sewn. Kind of colorful and fun. 
fits my motif of liking colorful and fun stuff. I also buy textiles from time to time. I try not to for some reason. This is really cool. It's hanging over the edge. This is a, it's like a pillowcase. Super cool pillowcase. Date it. Anna J. Kessler, 1862. Uh, Emily's good at research. And she found the woman. Born in Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, in 1842, so she was 20 when this was made, possibly to a wedding to her husband. She lived until the 1900s, passed away, and is buried in Lancaster County, so I guess she spent her whole life in Lancaster County. Pretty cool thing. Uh, a little bit of damage, but I don't know, textile from 1862, thinking of getting it mounted, thinking of mounting it, thinking of selling it to a dealer who likes to get stuff mounted and let them deal with that, but um, it's colors aren't popping quite as much as they should colors are really good in this it's a uh, very overcast as i'm filming this and it's the white balance does not like this this yellow but it's a more of a brighter yellow than it's probably showing on camera but really cool cool thing pillowcase 1862 bought this off of instagram actually from someone i've never met before but super excited to add this to the fold so that was my finds for the uh for these last four or five days between one live auction in person, I attended in person here in Ohio, as well as uh, some cool things shipped to me that I've opened up this week. So, hey, I'm setting up at a show this weekend, looking to sell some of this stuff and have some fun and hopefully buy some stuff. Uh, thanks for watching and following my antiques nomadic journey as I travel across the country buying and selling antiques. Peace.